All right, I got some PC boards today. Uh, thank you, PCB Way, for supporting the channel. And uh, let's take a look at these. Uh, let's take a look at these boards. This this is one of the. I think I'm the most proud of this board. I think I think this will be really great for a lot of people who are who are starting out with uh, analog electronics. There we go. So what is this board? Well, it's a PC board and a schematic at the same time, and it's basically two circuits. So uh, one dual op amp goes here and one dual op amp goes here. Now, dual op amps have a standard pinout, so you can put lots of different devices in these two. So you can compare it, uh, you can compare two of the same op amps together to see if they're matched. You could check for China clones, uh, put two that you think are supposed to be the same, but you can test them, see if they aren't. You can do testing on your circuits. You could load different values for the particular circuit you're interested in and measure the Bode plot, measure the frequency response, things like that. Um, yeah, you can use them for all kinds of things. And uh, the nice thing about it is the where the components load is on the schematic, right? And so for each op amp, since it's a, it's a dual op amp, Okay, one of the op amps is this circuit and then the other op amp is this circuit. And then same for this chip, this is the upper half of the chip and this is the lower half of the chip. And I have a, a standard inverting amplifier on the bottom and I have a non-inverting amplifier at the top. So you can load these up to do all sorts of different things. Um, uh, I've also included a capacitor on the input, so you can capacitively couple in your signal if you want to, or you can just put a, a short jumper there and just forget about it. And um, I've put a resistor to ground so you can control the, uh, the input currents if you want to, otherwise just put a jumper to ground. Um, the output you can load if you want. A lot of the data sheets for op amps, um, some that I were looking at had a uh, a 2K resistor to ground for their test circuit, and then some 100 picofarads or something of capacitance to ground. Um, so, so I have a place here for a capacitor and a uh, resistor to load to load these things to 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 verify data sheets. Um, let's see what else. There's there's bypass coupling on the devices, and uh, you input the power at the top, uh, plus plus voltage, ground, and minus voltage, and this little bypassing up there too. Now the way these work is um, there's an input and there's an output, but this input also goes over to the second stage, okay? So if you input here, it's it's putting it onto both chips. And if you input here, it's also putting it onto both chips. So that's the way you can compare one signal in and two signals out. Um, I recommend if you get these boards built, uh, to have them built with a black uh, solder mask. Now, um, I've opted for this real fancy uh, matte black uh, version. They have a shiny black version that I think is free, and then this matte black version, which I really, really like, is, is a premium, uh, a premium color for them. Um, but yeah, these are these are great. So I got a big stack of these. Um, so let me show you a couple boards I've loaded up already. Uh, so here's what one looks like loaded. Um, I have values for the uh, non-inverting and for the inverting. I have a uh, 10K, 1K uh, for this, and I have, uh, I don't even remember what these values are. It's something like a, an 80, 82K and a 9K or something, just random values. I've loaded them with 3.3K just for fun. Um, and yeah, so I can compare these two op amps either in inverting or non-inverting. So we'll hook it up here and take a look at that. So that's kind of what it looks like if you have if you've loaded everything on. Um, so here's one that I've uh, loaded, just the uh, just the bottom part. And let's see, why did I do that? Oh, I remember what this one is. All right. So this one, uh, I've also AC coupled the, the uh, signal in. I put some capacitors here on the AC signal. Now, I wanted to have one board that I ran off. So other, this board is uh, running on a plus and minus rail. I wanted to have a board that ran on a single rail. And so at the top here, uh, I've shorted out the minus and the ground. So uh, ground and minus are both the same signal, uh, they're, they're ground, and um, which means the circuit won't work because it's using ground. Now, if you're using a um, an op amp 
with a single supply, you need to have a virtual ground. You need to split the ground. And so I use this resistor as half of the split, and then I put a resistor on the bottom to, to the other, to, for the other, other side. Um, let me draw a picture of that, make it more sense. All right, so normally you would have a, a, a resistor coming in to your, to your op amp. And this would normally be uh, ground, right? We just put this to ground. But usually, what you do here is you split the uh, sp you split the rail. So if this is a uh, ground and plus twelve, say, then you need to have a virtual ground here, and this will be plus twelve, and this will be ground. So this will be six volts. The center will be six volts. You just choose two capac two uh, resistors that are the same, and uh, that's the way you split the ground. So uh, what I've done on this circuit is I've used one of the I've put in a, what value I have here, a 1.5. I have 15K, 15K on this side and the 15K jumpered on, bodged on the back side to do this, uh, to do this thing here. So you can run, run these off of a single, single rail. And then I have one more that I've already, already loaded up. And this one, uh, I'm just interested in unity gain. So I'm using the non-inverting input just as a voltage follower. So I have just uh, wires and wires coming in. This is a jumper, this is a jumper. And then I have a jumper between the output and the negative. So it's just a unity buffer. Um, and so I can just run run this one as a unity buffer. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, if, you, if, you, if you build this, you know, get a stack of boards so you can all try all sorts of different, all sorts of different circuits out. I think this would be a really, really good teaching tool. So if you teach a class, um, and you're introducing op amps and stuff, I think this would be a great board to, to, to use for a classroom environment. Um, and if you're just uh, starting out in electronics and you want to learn, wow, this is the way to go. A lot of times you get lost in breadboarding things, you know. You'll end up with a board that looks like this, and you'll go, uh, I don't remember what goes where, and I don't, I don't remember. Is that the what does that resistor do? And so this one, you're seeing the schematic and the circuit all at the same time. And so when you probe with your voltmeter or you probe with your oscilloscope, you're seeing the schematic at the same time. So it's a really, really nice way to do it. All right, let's uh, let's turn one of these on. Just take a look, see what uh, see what you can see. All right, so let's hook one up here. I've got uh, plus minus 12 volts going in. And I've got uh, a sine wave coming in, and that's going to both sides. And then we're going to monitor the op amp number one here with the yellow trace, and op amp number two here with the cyan trace. And uh, you can see that, uh, hey, they look the same. The things are looking pretty good. Um, so we can maybe ex examine maybe the frequency response of these two op amps. So I will increase the frequency here 2 kilohertz. Uh, four kilohertz. Uh, let's go up here to. Oops, that's too fast. Thirty-seven kilohertz. Okay, so let's. That's that's a good example. So we've gone up to twenty-seven kilohertz, and you can see that uh, the green, uh, the blue op amp is working great, and the yellow op amp is failing. Right. So you can take a look at the frequency response of of this particular op amp. Uh, see what do we have in here. Uh, the yellow op amp is an LM three fifty eight. And the uh, blue one is an LM358. So they're both claiming to be LM358s, but obviously one is doing something different than the other. Um, so yeah, so you can examine things. You can examine things like this. Yeah, maybe one's a clone, maybe one's damaged, um, things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the, uh, uh, oh, I know what we can do. Let's look at the input, okay. And we will look at the output. Just a second here. I'm going to change the frequency back to something that it's happy with. All right. So uh, I'm showing you the input, which is the uh, blue and the output. So this gain, obviously, there's a gain of 10, right? So if I change my, my input gain, there we go. So it's about a gain of 10. I'm at 5 volt. Oops. I'm at uh, 5 volts per uh, division here. I'm at 0.5 volts per division here, so they look about the same. But what you see is you see that they're 180 degrees out of phase, right? And so it's an in inverting amplifier, all right? Okay, so you can do things like that. Great, great teaching tool, right? Um, so let's take a look at the uh, non-inverting. Oops, I went too far. Let's take a look at the, uh, the non-inverting section. We'll move our input up here to the, uh, to the top. 
Uh, we'll monitor the input and we'll move the output up. Monitor check this. Oops. Scope probes are getting in the way of each other. And I'm reaching around the camera. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you see here that we have a, uh, a non-inverting. So the input and the output are, uh, are, in, are in phase, right? Okay, so let's look at the other op amp. So now the blue trace is the other op amp. And we can move it so that both of these are at five volts per division. And there you go. Uh, they're looking. They're looking okay. This is at one. Uh, this is at one kilohertz. And again, we can we can go up in frequency, um, and we can start. Looks like these guys are starting to have a little bit of oscillation on them. So this particular configuration looks like there's maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of oscillation ground or something. Uh, you can see that this one is starting to fail, starting to get a crossover distortion and stuff. So anyway, it's it's a nice it's a nice tool to to, to take a look at different types of op amp circuits, and uh, again 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 a way good way to teach, good way to learn. Um, so anyway, hope you enjoy this board. Um, I really I, I really I really think I did, I did a good one this time. Um, if I don't say so myself, thank you. Uh, but uh, I think this would be a really, really good learning tool if you've never touched an op amp before and you can try different components out, get a stack of boards, uh, give them a try. Yeah, um, this project will be posted uh, on the PCB WayShare site. Um, so you can go there and order the board. I'll put the link down below to my shared boards. I have a whole bunch of shared boards. Uh, every project I do that's a PC board, I put there so you can download it if you want. Um, you can either have them manufacture it or it, it allows you to just download the Gerber files if you have another uh, board house that you like to use. Um, but uh, everything is there and uh, I used to have a link to this video there as well. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you.